Hi guys, my name is Nolan. Uh, previously on 536C, and I graduated the year of Tipping Point. I'm Zach. I graduated in Spin Up, and I was on Team 8041X Bridgebot. Uh, I'm Mason. I'm a junior, so I'm still competing, and I'm on Team 8481Z Mass Extinction. Uh, I'm Sam. I graduated in Spin Up, and I competed on Team 9364E. All right, so today we're gonna show you guys our bot bounce. And we're going to start off with our drivetrain, which is uh, the new meta. It's a five motor drive <laughs> using uh, four 11 watt motors and then two of the brand new VEX 5.5 motors. And so our drivetrain is 333 RPM on uh, 3.25 wheels and it, it holds up insanely well uh, against all other drivetrains, even uh, six motor drives. Um, moving on from our drivetrain here, which is beautifully zip tied down. We I have actually have one more thing to say about the drive. Oh, you have another? Yeah. yeah so, so the one thing that's kind of like the hidden like con for the 5.5s is since they're locked to 200 RPM, you can't change them. Uh, that's why we chose the ratio 333 RPM. It's a it's a uh, increase ratio, uh, so you're actually going faster than the motors are spinning. Uh, and we chose that because um, uh, the motors. Are yeah, the motor. Yeah, you kind of have to. Yeah, you have to have yeah. go from two hundred. You have um, to work. And you either go like stupid fast, or you go like pretty slow. And we just chose kind of an in between. Yeah, so it has a lot of good acceleration as well as the bot being really light makes it really really speedy and super drifty because of yeah. the eight wheels. Yeah. The weight of the robot helped with. And we caught up with the six hundred drives really well, and we were really maneuverable around the field with the. Um, uh, so with the weight of the robot, 500 drives really good, but you want to keep it at a relatively low weight so that there's not too much stress on the motors, but we didn't have a problem with overheating in any matches. Or and, and then the last thing is uh, the only other major thing about using the increase ratio is you have the big gears um, to deal with. So yeah. that's that's why we chose, uh, well, one of the reasons why we chose to do an eight-wheel drive is because otherwise you just have big gears in the way that would hit the barrier as you're going over. But with the um, eight wheels, we didn't have a problem with that. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the main part of our robot is a sled bolt that's drawn back in the back here with two 11 watt motors. And they're on an increased ratio actually with a five to three on this slip gear pulley sled. So as the, these motors spin, they, uh, they wind back the sled with his pulley right here. And it just pulls from the bottom to get better leverage. And once the, gears hit the slip on the other side, it actually just lets the slide bolt uh, go. And here I can pull the two. So we have two ratchets back here that hold it back really nicely, but when you let them go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> under motor power, that, that's what would happen. But uh, do we have a remote? I wonder. Yeah, you guys can turn it on. Yeah, we gotta turn it on. Um, but and well, there, uh, yeah, so one reason we actually chose to do the slingshot is because it has super, super alarm, uh, long arm length or like stroke length uh, and so we found that in testing we originally actually built a puncher for this robot uh, as you can see in the documentary <laughs> and um, we found that there just wasn't enough like momentum going into the shot to actually like shoot it as far as you need to shoot it yeah. um, and so that's why one of the reasons we ended up um, landing on the sling because you yeah. have like this entire distance um, and super long stroke length and just allows you to, to build up that momentum. To build need. the puncher, you need like the contact on the ball with such a s short stroke, stroke length. So we switched to slingshot so we can have the long stroke length instead of having to impact the ball. So with the with the long stroke length of the sled, we can pull it back and um, so it's, it's easier to launch instead of having to have the impact on the ball with the short stroke, stroke length. And then we have this um, in the front, so not adjustable have... blooper. <laughs> not adjustable <laughs> blooper. Yes. Basically, it doesn't do anything. But it's actually called. Hold on, we have to get the proper name. It's called the CMEC. Okay, right there. I don't know, I don't know if you can get that. It's the CMEC, and it it essentially does barely anything. But it, but it props up the ball a little bit. Just a wing shot. Um, and that's basically just a quick fix for us fi realizing that our angle is too low. Um, but I will note that um, it's. Better to shoot them at a higher angle yeah. um, because yeah. we found in our testing because when you do it at a low angle, there's usually a little bit of a bounce and that bounce is usually enough to get it over the net, in which case it just kind of like rolls right out. Yeah, kind of cool. Well, well, that was a bad end. It, it would go off the field essentially. It, um, it wouldn't have a high bounce. Oh. <laughs> 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 Typically stays inside right. the field. Yeah. 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 Also, 
people can block you pretty easily with this. With a, a, right. the reason we added this is it was very last minute because people were just stuffing us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this kind of helps, but it wasn't the greatest solution. But yeah, would definitely recommend having a higher angle if you go with the slingshot idea. Uh, it'll help with the defensive robots and just having the better angle instead of the balls going out of the field. You want to show off the range? Oh yeah, sure. All right. Let's just bring it back. So bring it back to the mass load area. Yeah. So the main you can kind of see exactly what you're working with. Yeah. So this barely gets over. Um, yeah. So the main strategy is just mass loading. Uh, just sitting here and just having one to two people, typically two people, because it's such a fast reload with the two motors on it, yeah. and just loading it in, um, and then just shooting it and having your teammate. Putting when in. you're yeah. fully undefended and you're just able to match load, it's a sub one second cycle time. Yeah. Like you can run, you can just, just run, run it, and just run it, you can see how fast it is. You can see, so like really quickly loading them in. Um, you might be around a second actually. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's about a second. It's really helpful if um, if you can get before defense comes to just just really just quickly get off all twenty two match loads onto the other side for your teammate and you to help push um, push them into the net. Yeah, and we noticed it's really difficult with the net and the size of the the tri balls to to like while, while shooting them from the other side to actually hit them under. So it's it's like to rely on that is a really not a very good strategy. Not the safest strategy. It's not safe. So, so just getting them over to your side for your teammate or you to just push them in from there the, is. And I guess one thing I will say the slingshot does actually aid in is that it's really good at just putting them inside the frame yeah. of the goal. So that way your partner can just walk up and push them all in. Yeah. yeah. And if you wanted to get real adventurous, you could do a actual like piston power blooper that was like angle changing. Mm -hmm. So you could have a lower angle for maybe potentially like getting it under the thing, which. We yeah, found to be not very consistent. Although a lot of teams, are trying a lot to of teams on YouTube that. have, although those videos are, fake. are extremely fake. scuffed. <laughs> but it was, it does can, not work. You can, you can pull these up. You can pull these up or and you can lift prop it. it up with a tri ball, but yeah, and then we'll, you we'll can talk about slide that. right under. But we'll, yeah. we won't get into that. <laughs> <laughs> just a few more small things. Uh, quickly on the front, we have sleds. They just kind of prop up right there. I mean, when we're under full power, it's a lot the, yeah, easier and, to see. And then on the back, we have battle wedges, and this is. <laughs> This thing actually carried our defense. Yeah. <laughs> you can kind of see that this bar got a little beat up from, you know, all the pushing and shoving. And if you're going to do these, you got to make sure they're super, like, well reinforced. Because um, they, like, <laughs> that is, like, the number one thing that, like, goes into other people's robots at super high speeds. So, uh, yeah. what we did right here is not what you want to do. <laughs> Just, like, <laughs> And I'll, in I, in an ideal it, scenario, just connect this. <laughs> there were several matches where these hard stops bent in too much, and we ended up digging into the tiles a little bit, which is obviously not ideal. So, um, another, yeah. you, you another thing that really helped us in autonomous for pushing balls underneath the net, I'd recommend an intake, but if you're going no intake, having these two <laughs> things. Yeah, go intake. <laughs> having these two things, this width of the tri ball, it like, Totally by circumstance, we, we just threw on this corral, um, but we basically just squeezed the tri ball for autonomous, and that allows us to maneuver the tri ball really well in autonomous, yeah. to the point where we, we were able to push one in in the offensive zone, and push one into the goal, and then one onto our side for the defensive zone. Yeah, and then and one more thing about this, the sleds. Um, we doubled them up because they break uh, easily. Uh, another one of our teams had that problem. Like, we broke like two different sleds. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, there you are. Yeah, that was um, not the original sled. <laughs> and then also, I would also lastly recommend putting them on the very outside because that just gives you more versatility. Um, yeah. yeah. It's like when you're coming in at an angle, you want to be able to like, that's the first thing that contacts so you can go over, um, not have to like come at it like straight like we do. So the last main component of this robot is the um, the hanging mech and the blocking mech. So it's um, <laughs> well, it's, a one to se <laughs> it's a one to seven gear ratio. Um, <laughs> I don't want her RPM motor, um, so it, it's um, with these passive locks here. So these allow for it to start. Um, it's a, it allows it for the, the, the robot to start like this, so that that way we can drive. Um, that you way. Want to go demonstrate? Yeah. Demonstrate the hanging. Yeah. yeah. So it's. Oh, one of the red drive motors is disconnected. That's great. <laughs> But yeah, so we have these two screws here that um, wrap around this pole, and then the one to seven on the 100 RPM motor is plenty of pull. We have the sled back, 
And then these, as as it goes up, these um, deploy out and lock the like the end. So when the match yeah. ends, the um, I mean, it's a, it's a pretty yeah. good match. So when the match ends, it goes like that. And you can see there's plenty of clearance off the ground. It's only about an A tier hang, but it can down. be a B tier if it's not bending. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, definitely would recommend better locks. These are thrown together in yeah, uh, 20 two minutes. minutes. <laughs> yeah. So but definitely better recommend better locks so you can have the higher hang, uh, which is definitely possible if you're doing curls. You can definitely get B, possibly C tier. But um, it's good. It's really easy to build with the one to seven gear ratio and it's plenty of torque. and it's. It's a good, um, at least early season mech for, for hanging. Oh, yeah. Bounce undefeated in quals, undefeated in elims, winning the whole yep. thing. Bounce spot is just overpowered. That, the 500 drive is the meta. Yeah. Trust yeah. us. And then this, Trust our word. <laughs> we can use this for defense, uh, block people with yeah. the, uh, you know, the bounce. The, the bounce, bounce mech. We're going to insert a picture here uh, right, right, up, right up at the top of the screen there of the bounce mech from uh, 515 Armor Vision in spin up. Yep. Um, it's completely overpowered. Everyone needs a bounce mech. Everyone needs it. <laughs> it's it's going to be single handedly the best thing this entire <laughs> season that anyone's <laughs> ever to build. It's just a piece of mesh. <laughs> Zip tied. But it says bounce on it, so yeah. that means it's overpowered. Yeah. Also, 515R. <laughs> just <laughs> it. We're going to have this song. You know it's good because it's from 515R. <laughs> Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, simple, simple robot, but whipped up in three days, but uh, it's, got, it's got some good concepts. Yeah. yeah. Definitely would recommend we, uh, going with an intake. The the non intake um, is definitely a struggle for Auton and match play, but uh, yeah, that, that was the thing. We we were like, oh yeah, no intake will be fine for match play because you can just like bump them over and push them and do whatever you want. But then we started. Then we got to match play. Then, <laughs> then, then we get to Auton's. <laughs> and then we were like, oh, oh wait a second. Yeah. 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 There was this distinct moment at the school where I'm like, Sam, we have no good paths here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 We literally have zero autonomous. It's, it's a shot bot at this point, which is a little bit of a, yeah. a killer. I won't lie, for, for RI3D, it was really good. You, you didn't need an intake for RI3D. Yeah. But for actual, you know, match play when you have three months to build a ball. Yeah, this the sledge definitely it's definitely a viable option in terms of shooting balls. It's a it, it shoots them low or not low. It, it, you can shoot them high. This one shoots them low. But then, so it's, it's just a. But if you're doing a sledge, have an intake. Yeah, please, yeah. please make an intake, guys. <laughs> <laughs> and and we meant uh, slingshot, by the way. Right? Every time we say sled. Yeah, unless, we, unless we're talking about these. It's actually it's actually called a railgun. <laughs> it's a railgun sled slingshot, whatever, whatever the heck <laughs> you want to call, call it. But the, it's on a sled. It's actually a slingshot. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Thank now, you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you. Bounce, bounce out. Bounce out. <laughs>